Josh Allen here from Buck Support. I'm with Super Bowl 53 champion, Patriots, and current Texans cornerback, Keon Crossan. Keon, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, yourself? Doing very well, thanks for asking. How have you been this offseason? What have you been up to? Oh, uh, man, uh, honestly, man, just trying to stay safe out here, man. Um, you know, dealing with that COVID-19. Yeah. Um, trying to make sure me and my family safe and uh, anyone else around us. Uh, but other than that, man, been working hard, grinding. Um, getting ready for the season to start whenever that is uh, so you know that's about it man perfect um, now you were traded to the Texans last year from New England what was something that you took away or learned from your experience in New England and your time there and how did that help you in Houston um yeah I think I was traded around like September 1st August 30th ish um but I, I learned a lot man and uh, you know a few core things that they teach you is pretty much you know Ignore the hype, um, control what you control every day. Um, and, you know, I think Bill Belichick put it, put it, you know, one of the best ways I've ever heard it was, you don't have to be perfect, but you got to be good. Um, and, you know, that, that that's stressful to be good every day um, because all you're doing is building consistency, though, um, at the end of the day. Um, because a, a perfect person is, you know, you won't find that. But... The elites of the elites, like the Bradys and the Gronks, they're yeah. very, very, very consistent. The McCordys, they're very consistent at what they do every day. Stephon Gilmore, um, every day, it's consistent yeah. every day. So um, that's what that's one thing I learned, um, and I'm still actually um, is being you know threaded into our into our heads today uh, with the Texans. So um, it's kind of what's kind of what I learned. Uh, another thing was, um, you know. Teamwork, yeah. teamwork, communication is big, um, and that's on and off the field. Mm -hmm. um, you build, you create team camaraderie in the offseason. Yeah, um, that's by the work you put in first and foremost. Um, you build trust by the work you put in, and um, you obviously build a winning organization just because you trust each other so much yeah. from the work you put in. So um, obviously, I'm a workaholic, so. Mm -hmm. I'm all about the work, so uh, that's a few things I've learned from from New England that I brought to the to the Texans. That blood, sweat, and tears mentality. Yeah, man, I think that's what you gotta have every day, anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, what was it like going against Tom Brady in practice, and uh, how did the challenge of going against him improve your game? Um, as a rookie, I would say uh, I would include myself and J.C. Jackson. Um, uh, I think we were probably two of the rookies that probably challenged me the most at corner because it's hard. I mean, you got JC who's a big corner, yeah. um, has speed. Uh, it's hard to throw in that guy, uh, as you can see, as yeah. he played well, you know, the last few years in the league. Um, I was more speedster, uh, play inside and outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you could get a step, but I'll get that step right back. And, you know, it was times where I know Brady come to me and they asked me, like, Hey, Key, you know, what you think about, you know, you think you think this guy get a step on you if we do this? Or, and that was pretty dope for me because yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm a rookie. And Tom Brady just asked me a question. But I, I really took that and, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I really looked at it as like, this guy has enough trust in you to ask you a question. Mm. And he obviously expects, you know, an honest answer, yeah. not a prideful answer. So that's the first thing I had to really, t you know, tell myself, like, this guy's not looking for pride. He's looking for an honest answer to help us, to help the team. Um, but I think we, we I, you know, for myself, I think I pushed him every day. Um, he threw in a few tight windows. He threw some great balls. Um, yeah. But my challenge was to challenge him every day, to challenge myself every day. Yeah. And how I challenged myself was, hey, how many balls can you pick off from Tom Brady? How many interceptions can you get? You know, uh, yeah. how many PBUs can you get in practice? Uh, because when you're playing against the best of the best in the league, I mean, practice is a game. Yeah. You know, it's he's got to make those same throws in the, in the game and if i make it harder in practice then i know he'll, he'll definitely do it in the game so um i mean he's got 20 plus years of that so uh you know just also going against some of the best receivers i mean he, he critiqued routes you know so if i'm listening to him critique a route like hey i need you you know 12 but come back at 10 i'm listening at that yeah and you know i take that to my game I'm like, okay hey if he's gonna start punching at 12 mm. i'm gonna pull up and a half because i'm gonna have a step on him anyway uh because he got to turn around. I'm, I'm already looking where he's trying to go. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's things like that where you kind of push yourself, you listen um, to help make your game better, uh, help make your teammates' game better. Um, 
and just make the team better, period. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Um, subsequently, being an inside-outside corner and with Gronk being lined up in the slot and outside sometimes, yeah. what was it like going up against him and how did that, you know, kind of elevate your game going up against someone as big as him, um, as, you know, fast as him and as dynamic as him? Um, you know, I would say it's a great challenge every day. Yeah. Because uh, this guy will, you know, he'll catch a ball and he'll be laughing. He'll be like, hey, <laughs> not funny, but, you know, he's like got that, that goofy laugh, you know what yeah. I mean? You're like, hey, ain't funny, you know what I mean? But it's all in respect. This is how he is, his character. He yeah. like to have fun, like play. Um, more, I'm more of a challenge, you know, challenge guy where I'm, I'm, hey, I don't want you to catch anything. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it was, it's, it's very important to understand, like, your personnel. Um, mm. When I went up against Gronk, um, and it, it wasn't a lot, but it was whenever I got the chance, I tried to, I, I almost, every time I almost knew what he was doing. Yeah. You know, I mean, probably 90, 90% of the time I knew what he was doing. And it's like, this guy's hands was like a glue. You know, it was like it was like a glue stick, bro. I mean, he, he can be great. I mean, you can jump on his back and still catch the ball. Yeah. Um, but that comes from him being consistent, work ethic, practicing his uh, craft, um, fundamentals. Um, obviously, great passes from Brady. So, um, I mean, that that guy was he's fun to play with, fun to be around. Absolutely, especially where you know you know might not know, might know what he's doing to you. But because he's so big and he's got so much experience and so much skill, it doesn't really matter, you know. Just try to defend it the best way you can. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So what was some of the, like, one of the biggest takeaways you took away from their leadership standpoint on and off the field? Um, for the most part, I think, you know, every detail is important. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and that's to both. I mean... You think of it like I, I used to literally sit like right behind Brady in the meetings. So, yeah. I mean, this guy. I, I mean, from the beginning of the meeting to the end of the meeting, this guy has a pen. He's in his notes. He's taking notes. He's writing more notes. Even after the meeting, he's still writing notes. Um, <laughs> he's writing questions about you know things he he may need to ask. And it's like, man, this guy's been in there twenty plus years, and he's still writing notes. Like I know it's nothing that he hasn't seen. But the formality of being a professional is yeah. exactly what it is. He's a, he's a stand-up professional, man. Um, and uh, I, I respect Brady a whole lot, man. He actually uh, he actually bought, you know, I don't know if you guys ever seen the containers that he uh, drinks out of, those, like, uh, containers. Yeah. The metal-ish container. Yeah, yeah. Aluminum, excuse me. Um, but he actually got in one of those. Uh, and, uh, I, I mean, I'll ask him, like, hey, man, what do you think about PC? down safety, you know, things like that. But it's just the details, you know, he may go back to his notes and be like, well, we probably would do this. You know, it's like, wow, just the details from Brady, man, and his consistency on uh, the work ethic. Um, and then from Gronk, man, I, from him, you know, he's a different breed. So, you know, you got to always have fun. You can't never lose the fun in the game. Yeah, I think lose the fun in the game um, and it starts becoming just a job. It's, it's the day you probably want to leave. You want to leave the game, yeah. and that's what he shows us every day. Um, you know, in my opinion, he probably left because of some injuries the first time. You know, try to get his body back together. Yeah. Um, but he still had fun. You yeah. Know, even when he was injured, he was still having fun, man. I was like, that's crazy. So that just <laughs> motivated me to, to kind of like, hey, no matter what happens, win, loss, draw, have fun. Have fun, come to work, be a professional. Absolutely. And then, you know, Tom Brady's still taking notes like a rookie and then willing to come to give you advice, you know, when you ask for it, not kind of, you know, big timing anybody and just there to help improve the team has got to le- got to speak volumes to you as well. No doubt. Yeah. Um, so what was it like coming into a program that had immediate Super Bowl expectations? Because in New England, uh, the fans are extremely spoiled, and it's pretty much Super Bowl or bust when you have Tom and Belichick and some of the cast members there. So, what was what was it like coming into that program? Well, the thing about it is, every year you got a new team. Yeah. Um, although your expectations may be Super Bowl expectations, you got a new team every year. Okay. And um, well, I, you know, I went to D one double college, so the only thing I knew because I didn't win a championship, I was. Championship and content for in, in the contender spot for to be a champion, mm-hmm. uh, multiple times. 
but we can finish the job. And the thing about it is, you know, just because, you know, just because you're entering somewhere that's expected, you know, you can't rely on expectations. Yeah. You gotta rely on reality. And the, the biggest thing about reality is that if we didn't work hard every day, if we wasn't putting in extra time in the weight room, film room, um, in the nutritional stages of, of, of football, we wouldn't have been champions. Yeah. Um, but that's a process that happens over and over and over until, like, you didn't, in New England, you never look at the next game. You look at the game that you have in front of you. It's never about, oh, well, we got two weeks ahead. We got this one. It's, it's right now on Monday, mm-hmm. we have the New England Patriots. Yeah. Versus New England Patriots, and we're trying to scout whomever we're playing. Yeah. Um, so that's what you focus on, and you gotta work out that you gotta worry about one day at a time. That's the I think that's what you when you come in. That's honestly the the Patriot way. It's the, that's the expectation. That's the expectation that you have. Um, it's not worrying about a championship. They, we don't even it you know it wasn't talked about when the previous when I was there. A championship wasn't talked about until we got to the championship. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we we spoke on it one time in the playoffs when the first game, when the playoffs came, and we was like, "Hey, it's go time. It's yeah. just time to get. We need to go." No, that was all said. That was the only time it was talked about. Huh. Just quietly, quietly expected, but never talked about. I like that. Only thing you're expected to do is work. Now and like so, Tom Brady obviously came out of Tampa, and if you look at the media and everything, they're all talking about you know Super Bowl or bust, Super Bowl in the backyard. Um, the high expectations down here, um, it's being talked about freely. Maybe not so much the players, but everywhere else. What should his teammates expect, and how how to handle those ex- expectations for a team that hasn't made the playoffs in almost seventeen years? Um, well, you know, I, I can't really speak for his teammates because you know they they're in a different position than I am. Yeah, uh, I, and I don't know them very well. Um, so I can't necessarily uh, speak for his teammates, but. Um, as a football player, I would say, um, you got to come to work every day. You got to come to work. You don't just, just because you have Tom Brady, don't mean you want Super Bowl. Exactly. And you figured that out like last year. Uh, they had Tom Brady, mm-hmm. Patriots, no Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, it doesn't really matter about one guy. It doesn't matter about, it, it matters about the team. Yeah. Um, team matters, T A M. If people say, oh, there's a meeting team, you know, I think that was a Jordan. But I mean, yeah. That's basketball. That's a little different. Yeah, yeah. Football is about all eleven guys because if one person busts, everybody busts. Um, so I think you got you know that's gonna be on their team to kind of figure out their expectation and their standard. But I know here in Houston, our standard is uh, we want to be championship caliber. We, we're working on that, and we're gonna definitely get there. Um, you know, so we got we gonna grind every day, work every day. I can't speak for Tampa Bay and yeah. you know what Tom Brady teammates may expect, but I know uh, my teammates expect. Uh, expectations are very high, um, but we we also understand that there's a lot of work that needs to be done and put in to get to the ultimate goal of a Super Bowl champion. Sure. Yeah. What now? It, back in New England as well. Um, you know, New England uh, Patriots and and Tom Brady brought a specific mindset to that locker yeah. room. Um, how do you do? You, do you see more of, more of like a relaxed Tom? Without Belichick there, do you see him still bringing that soldier warrior mentality where it's down um, to the wow. details and not having fun? Or what do you, what do you kind of, just an opinion, what do you, what do you think is going to happen down there? Because you've um, seen Gronk a little bit already kind of going off the. I think a guy, I think you are who you are every day. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the Tom Brady that he was in New England, you probably get the same Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. Um, I mean, look at how he started. He wants all the guys' numbers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's. I mean, you are who you are every day. Um, you can't change that. Um, you know, you, you can't change that. Uh, so, I think he'll be who he is, who he's consistently been. Um, and that time will tell itself on, on who he will be or, you know, in that instance. How happy are that he's out of a conference now? <laughs> I'm sure they're very. I'm sure they're very excited. They, <laughs> like, I mean, the Jets, Buffalo, just the um, AFC in general. You guys don't have to go through them in Foxborough, you know. You know what? It don't matter if we had to go through them in Foxborough or Tampa. We gonna go through them. Period. Oh, so I, know I like the Texas, that. So we, we, like I said, we working in. Um, one player can't beat eleven guys, so exactly. uh, you probably got a, a lot of impact in beating eleven guys. Uh, 
Um, and I respect his game wholeheartedly, man. I, like I said, I played with him, got led us to a Super Bowl. So, mm. um, but obviously, I'm on the opposing end here. So, uh, you know, we we working hard over here. We got Deshaun Watson over here too, baby. Oh, so, yeah. uh, we ready to go too. Oh yeah, a little DJ in the off season as well. I, I I saw the moves you guys have been making. So, yeah. yeah. Um. So one other thing is, you came here with uh, the Houston Texans to Tampa Bay uh, for a football game last year. Um, what did you, what did you see or anything stand out to you uh, when you came in here and scouting the offense and kind of looking at that special teams? Did anything stand out to you? Uh, yeah, a lot of things stood out, but I, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to tell you what stood out. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, that's, that's my piece of information and yeah. my, a little, uh, I guess get ahead step yeah. on, on Tampa Bay. So okay, I think oh that when I tell you what did stand out, um, the lack of fans that was in the stadium that was that was a rough one. So uh, hopefully they can, you know, add some fire to it. Uh, that'll make the game a little bit more interesting. Not that we care about the fans because when we come in, it's normally quiet because we win. So. <laughs> Now, speaking of the fans, uh, the NFL has also been talking about playing the entire season possibly without fans in the stands and also pumping in crowd noise. What are your thoughts on those two things? Uh, in my opinion, I don't really care about the fans. Not to say not, we don't want the fans. Yeah. Um, it's not going to not gonna affect your game, though. No. I mean, I practice with no fans. Yeah, I don't mind playing with no fans because, you know, when you locked in, it's not about you don't really hear the crowd. You lock in on your assignment. Everything is going so fast in a way of speaking. Um, although the game slows down to you, the more years and experience you have, but mm-hmm. everything is happening. Qu- it's quick on the field, so you don't really have time to be thinking about. Oh, are they cheering? Are they booing? Or like, who cares? Like, you know. But we do appreciate the fan, the support. Um, I don't want to sound like a, a butthole on this thing, <laughs> um, but I no. do appreciate the, their support and uh, you know their efforts to, to support whichever team you're with. Um, if we don't have fans, you will be missed. Yeah. Uh, by the players, coaches, the entire NFL league. Um, I'm sure I can speak for everybody on that. Um, but if we do have a fan, then I'm sure they want to have the house jumping anyway. So yeah, they want to do is you know I think we're professionals. We're going to handle it as a professional. Absolutely, great answer. Um, so just you know, how important was it for you coming in to have OTAs and a mini camp and all that stuff as a rookie? And seeing how most of that stuff's been wiped out this year, how do you think that's going to affect this year's crop of rookies? Just speaking in generalities, you know, not knowing, you know. Yeah, um, but you know, I think these this this set of rookie class, this set of rookie class, is going to have it probably the hardest, um, because and the NFL and college is two different entities. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the thing about it is, you got different drops, you got different, you know, play calling, you got three plays tagged into one, then you got motions, you know. Yeah. And league, you make it two by two, motion three by one, back out the back field, now you got empty. So, you know, it's, <laughs> and you got three different checks right there. So, you know, you, you, it's hard to it's hard to simulate that, you know, with a uh, computer screen. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, it's, you know, so, you know, it's ways to simulate that in the real world. Um, the best way you can cones, you know, at home, if you're at home, get your dog to run, you know, across the field. That's a three by one, you know, it's a way to do it. Yeah. But to actually see a body, a helmet quarterback, giving a cadence. I mean, even think about that, a cadence. I mean, yeah. cause if you go line up right on somebody, you got Tom Brady, you know, he's going to be like, check, check, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, he's like up oh, there, man, yo, know, they're in zone, you know, whatever it yeah. is, but you got to learn how you learn how to disguise. You got to learn how to win. I think the biggest thing, especially for a corner, is OTAs help you with hand checking. Yes. From college to the NFL, you can't hand check. You know what I mean? So, you know, the hand checking, the, the, I mean, I, I probably, I know, I know you probably remember, but my, my first year, if you looked it up, I probably got flagged. I got flagged three times in one game for a holding call. Yeah. Passing, two passing three. I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But, you know, you know, that's the aspect that you have to learn. And mm-hmm. most people outside looking in don't really understand that. But that's why you have OTAs so you can wear pads or mitts or gloves or, you know, ball your fist up so you, don't, so you can work on the little fundamentals that you need. So it'll be interesting to see how many rookies play this year um, and uh, how many, you know, 
prosper, if you will, because, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's a different year. And, and those guys who do, kudos to you, man, because, I mean, you went to hell to do it. So yeah. The level of competition, too, you're playing against, you know, grown men. Some of them have been in the league for, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. It's got to be an extreme uh, jump from the competition, even if you were, say, in the SEC playing against some of the, the you know, the bigger boys down there. It's got to be just a jump to see how they perform. I think that's yeah. what most people are kind of looking at is without all this practice time, how will these young rookies be able to integrate themselves into NFL offenses to make impacts right away? Like you said, especially with corners, you couldn't check. And now you're going up against someone like, you know, hate to use your former teammate, DeAndre Hopkins or yeah. or Larry Fitzgerald or one of these consummate pros who knows how to use their hands to get open and, and you're learning how to defend that for the first time. It's got to be extremely challenging. Very challenging. Yeah. <clears throat> they'll, they'll get it. Um, like you say, that, like they're professionals too. They'll adjust. And, you know, they'll be all right. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, how has your virtual offseason been going? And like, what have you been doing to stay in shape? Um, during the quarantine and everything like that. And what have you been doing um, to keep yourself entertained? I mean, I know you're probably grinding a lot, but, you know, there's got to be some downtime where you can kind of... Yeah. First of all, season good, man. I mean, I'm sure I'm doing what everybody else is doing, meetings, working out, um, just, you know, working on crap. Uh, that's what I've been doing, man. I'm, 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 you know, I'm not, I'm not going to really say I'm a perfectionist, but I expect good. Yeah. Um, so... I know things that I need to work on for my craft uh, that I've specifically been tailored to. Um, I've been working on those things, and uh, it's kind of, it was kind of the things that was holding me back from being like the ex- excellent corner that I need to be. Yeah. Uh, so I've been working on those things, and how you get good at Mr. Ben is being consistent, and you keep working on them, you keep working on them until they become second and third nature to you. Um, but yeah, I've been doing that, man. I'm a golfer, so. I was actually checking Tom Brady out. I was going to tell him about that, that you know, the one he hit to the wood. I'm like, hey, buddy, we got to do better. <laughs> yeah, split his pants, but he hit, did hit that nice eagle. I don't know if you saw uh, that. And then, then he comes back and hit an eagle, so that, that kind of that counts as out. Kind so. of talking, talking trash to Charles there for a little bit. Yeah. That was good. And then the, the... Thought, nice man. Um, so, yeah, I like to golf. Uh, I you know I'm, I'm probably probably the same level as those guys. Yeah. Probably, I mean, I'll get lucky and hit an eagle. <laughs> but, um... I like to golf. I like to skate. Uh, I like to bowl. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty elite at all of them. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you want to try, you know, compete with me, let me know. Absolutely, definitely. Um, and then, what do you got going on right now? I mean, I've seen you went back. Uh, you're giving back to the community a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. I heard you went back to school. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. But is there um, anything else you're working on that people should know about? I know you have the clothing line for a little bit, but. What's going? What are you up to right now? What's going on? Uh, yeah, man. So, um, kind of just innovating everything. Uh, we're gonna bring the clothing clothing line back, um, probably this season. Um, also, you gotta innovate. Yeah, uh, and I, I want to do that online. I want to make it easier to purchase. Um, to be able to connect with me. Uh, want to do more giveaways. So, just being in the process of trying to organize everything to make sure. That we kind of you can our brand out there to the fans and also being able to uh, support um, and, and support in many ways. I think uh, maybe a few months back, I think I donated twenty thousand dollars to um, Western wow. Carolina's FCA, which is my alma mater. Nice. Um, so you know, I thought that was big because that that's what helped me. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a Christian, uh, and I, I really believe that you know things like that is what changed lives of people yeah um, you're ordained too right sir you're ordained as well yeah i'm a minister yeah, yeah. you can marry people and all that yeah so, preach you know, sermons and for guys and ladies that's listening um i can marry you uh, i don't prefer to do this but guys and guys ladies and ladies i'll do you too so uh god loves everybody and so do i so uh Absolutely. yeah i've been i've been doing that man we were trying to get some some things here together um to support um you know, my community back home, trying to get some things going in Houston to support the community here uh, for us football camps. Um, we want to build some mentorship programs. Nice. Um, I'm trying to uh, pair up with the hospital to, you know, help the, the, the hospital with, you know, whether that's donating time, donating gloves. Yeah. Uh, um, see if I can 
uh, donate to schools as far as electronics, because uh, I know a lot of schools don't really fund, especially the, the public um, mm -hmm. lower end schools, they don't really fund the, the tablets and stuff. So seeing how we compare with them um, is obviously hard right now in those times because yeah. COVID slowing everything down. And we got this uh, the racism issue going on in the world right now. Um, it's unfortunate. Which, yeah, which is just, I mean, we gotta we gotta get the get together as a country and fix this thing, man. So absolutely. Uh, so that's what I've been doing, man. Um, also, we've been having Bible study as a team. Uh, so I've been trying to keep those guys mm -hmm. and myself uh, just, you know, above, above water, man. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. um, iron shops iron. And that's what I'm here to do, whether it's with my teammates and another community. Um, I mean, uh, wherever it is, wherever I can help out, that's what I'm trying to do. Nice. That's, a, that's, a, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Uh, I appreciate your time today. Uh, thank you so much for, for doing this and giving some insight and uh, just, you know, give us insight on, you know, forming with teammates and, and on yourself and what's been going on. And is there uh, anywhere people can follow you, Twitter, uh, Yeah, Instagram? so uh, I'm on Twitter at simply, uh, simple Keon Crossing. Um, you can find me. Um, Instagram, same thing, Keon is for Crossing. Um, if you type in my name, at Keon Crossing, you're going to definitely find me. I'm probably the first one to pop up. Uh, but if you follow me, um, I'll definitely... Give you a follow back. Um, I see you guys. I want you to let you know. I want to let you know your voice is heard. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm not that. I'm not the the famous person to 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 not see. Um, I'm I'm not blind. I'm not invisible. Uh, and I want you to know the same thing. So uh, they can follow me there. And uh, I, I like I like comedy. So if you got some funny to send me, please do. Yeah. Uh, I'm down for it. I'm down for it. Nice. Right, so thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.